Hey there, students, and welcome to the Compass Practice Test uh, Sample Questions on uh, College Algebra. I'm going to be going over the release questions. They're available online. Um, so let's go ahead and take a look at uh, question one. There are nine questions in this, on the release questions, um, and I'm going to go over all of them. All right, so number one says, what is the next term in the geometric sequence? 16, negative 4, 1, negative 1 fourth. Now, for geometric sequences, um, the first, the next term differs from the other by something called the common ratio. Okay, so this is a general form for writing a list of um, geometric um, sequences. So generally, it can be expressed as a um, as a one, a one, and then the next one is a one times r as a2 and then a1 times r squared and then a3 I mean a1 times r to the third and then it goes on and on like, like that so the whole idea behind geometric sequence is that every time you multiply by a number called the common ratio so to go from the first term to the second term you multiply by r and then to go from the second to the third you multiply by r notice you keep multiplying by exactly the same thing okay so that's exactly what's happening here. We are multiplying by the same number. Okay, so from here to here, I need I multiply by a certain number, and then from negative four to one, I need to multiply by a certain number, and then same process here. And when I figure out what that number is, when I multiply negative one fourth by that number, that will tell me what the answer is. So that number is called the common ratio. All right. So how do you find a common ratio? To find a common ratio, all you simply do is you can uh, divide second term by the first term or the third term by the second term or the fourth term by the third term the general formula is simply um, a n divided by a n plus minus one so a term divided by the term before it should give you the common ratio all right so in this problem to find a common ratio i'm just going to pick this is a1 a1 is 16 right here a1 is 16 and a2 is negative four so to find a common ratio I'll, let's just use this, A2 and A1. I can use A3 and A2 or A4 and A3, it doesn't matter, okay? You get exactly the same ratio, okay? So, to get a common ratio, I'll divide A2, which is negative 14, by A1, which is 16. If you divide that out to get, reduce this to negative 1 fourth. So what on earth does this mean? This means that every single time I'm multiplying by negative 1 fourth, okay? So when you multiply 16 by negative 1 fourth, you get negative 4. When you multiply negative 4 by negative 1 fourth, guess what? You get 1. And then when you do multiply 1 by negative 1 fourth, you get negative 1 fourth. And to get the next term, you just simply multiply by negative 1 fourth again. Okay? So to get the answer to this problem, let me partition my workspace. To get the answer to this problem, um, what I'm going to do See, I'm looking for A5, right? So to get A5, the fifth term or the next term, I'm just going to take A4, which is negative 1 fourth, and I'm going to multiply by what? The common ratio, which is negative 1 fourth, okay? So what is negative 1 fourth times negative 1 fourth? Just multiply across, top to top, 1, minus times minus is a plus, 4 times 4 is 16. So your final answer for... Um, Number one is option C. Okay, so there you have it. Um, now let's take a look at number two. It says the manufacturing company processes raw ore for, sorry, the number of tons of refined material the company can produce during two days using the process A is A of T equals T squared plus 2T. And using the process B is B of T equals 10T. The company has only seven days to process for and must complete and must choose uh, of these processes. What is the maximum output of refined material in tons for this time period? So we have two processes here represented by two different functions. So the question is um, which of these two function will produce the biggest output, the maximum output. So there are two approaches that we can use to solve this problem. We can use a graphical approach 
and compare the graphs. Think, think, think about what the graphs of these two look like as they approach infinity. Or we can use a numerical approach, okay? So these are the functions that we're looking at, AFT and BFT. Now, um, I'm going to use a numerical approach for this problem because it's less complicated. The graphical approach um, is a little bit more involved, so I'll try, try to keep it easy here so that you do well on your, on your complex test, okay? So if you can use the numerical approach anytime, it's good to just make sure that you see exactly what's going on, okay? All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to generate a table of values, and I'm going to compare the output values of these two uh, for the seven days and see which one generates the maximum output, okay? All right, so let's go ahead and do this. All right, so I'm going to start out with the uh, quadratic function. Let's make a table of values uh, and then compute the output value. So for the quadratic function, um, we're going to have t column here and then um, a of t equals t squared plus 2t, okay? So we're going to start out from uh, 1. Time is unidirectional, it just goes positive, it doesn't go negative. So we're going to go from 1 all the way to um, 7. Okay, so let's start with 1. So for 1 is a of 1, which is going to be 1 squared plus 2 times 1. What did I just do? I just plugged in 1 for t here and here. Okay, and I want to see where the output is going to be. So it's going to be 1 plus 2, which is 3. Okay? Then 2, a of 2, we're going to have 2 squared plus 2 times 2, which is 4 plus 4, and the output for 2 days, after 2 days is 8. Sorry, let me write my 8 properly. <laughs> so the output for 2 days um, is 8. Alright, so 3, a of 3, you're going to have 3 square. I mean, yes, 3 square plus 2 times 3. Uh, it's going to be 9 plus 6, and the output for that is 15. For A4, uh, A4, A4 is um, 4 squared plus 2 times 4, which is 16, plus 8, and the output is 22. 5, A5 is 5 squared. Plus 2 times 5, which is 25 plus 10, the output is 35. The reason I'm doing this is you have to be really careful with quadratic functions because they can change direction. Um, in this case, the vertex is, on, is, on, is in a negative area, so we're going to be going in the same direction, but you never know. If you don't know what the graph looks like, you can't make assumptions as to what the, the pattern, the direction of the change in magnitude is. So, Let's finish this up. A6, uh, you're going to have 6 squared plus 2 times 6, which is 36 plus 12. The output after 6 days is 48. And then for 7, uh, you have A7. A7, just input 7 into your function, and you have 7 squared plus 2 times 7, uh, which equals 49 plus 14, and your answer is 63. Okay? So you can see that the output keeps increasing, and the maximum output using this process, A, is 63 after 7 days. So the second process is a linear process. It's much easier to generate the table of values. This one, you can just simply plug in 7 since it's unidirectional, but I just want to show you the pattern, okay? So for A, of, I'm sorry, for B of T, B of T is 10T, because if you notice, that's what it says here b of t equals 10t, so that's what I'm using, all right? So we're going to start from 1. This one, you just simply multiply by 10. So b of 1 is 10 times 1, which is 10. And then for 2, b of 2 is 10 times 2, which is 20, okay? And the pattern continues. b of 3 is 10 times 3, which is 30. And then b of 4, output after 40 is 40. Five days, output after five days is 50. Six, output after six days is 60. And seven, output after seven days is 70. Okay? So I just wanted to easily see the comparison here. All right? Compare them, you can see that for these two, the output keeps increasing. 
The biggest output for the process A is 63, and the biggest output for process B is 70. So the winner here is process B, and the maximum output after seven days, at seven after seven days, is 70, and the answer is E. Okay. All right. So let's move on to question number three. It says for two for the two functions f of x and g of x, tables of values are shown below. What is the value of g of f of three? All right. So g of f of three just means that um, a value gets inputted into a function, and then the value of that function gets inputted into another function. All right. So basically, uh, we're starting with x, and then um, x is inputted into the function f. And when you plug in x into f, you end up with f of x. And then f of x gets inputted into another function. This output is inputted into another function, g. And then your final output is going to be g of f of x. Okay? So we're just going to do this stepwise. First thing, we take our input and plug it into the first function to get our first output. And whatever output we generate, we'll plug it into our second function to get our final result, which is g of f of 3. Okay? All right, so let's go ahead and do it. So we're going to start with x. x is, uh, what is x? The innermost value, which is 3, that's what x is, x is 3. Okay? So we're going to first of all look for f of 3. So you're going to use the table that relates f and x. This is the table that's going to make us make this connection right here. So we look for 3. That goes 3 in the x. What is the output? The output for 3 is 2. So f of 3 is 2. Okay? So now we know that from here, from 3, 3, this uh, function has taken us to the value 2. Now we're going to now use this. This 2 now becomes an input. Okay? And that becomes our new x. So this will be inputted into g to get what the output is. So now uh, we're going to look for the, the chart that relates an input with the function g. So now we're going to look for g of f of 3. Okay? But wait a minute though. What is f of 3? f of 3 is 2. So what we're looking for in essence is g of, let me put it in blue, g of 2. Okay? So g of 2, we're going to look for an input on the x and g table and see what the output is when the input is 2. So there you have it right here. So when x is 2, what is the output? The output is negative 3. All right, so g of 2 is negative 3. So there goes your final answer. Your final answer for number 3 is b. Okay? All right. Let's go ahead and move on to uh, question number 4. Uh, question 4 says, for positive real numbers x, y, and z, which of the following expressions is equivalent to x to the 1 half? Uh, y to the 2 3rd and z to the 5 6. Now, if you look at this, um, we need to make all the denominators the same so that we can have a common root. Okay, and then we extract that root. So, in order to make all the denominators the same, we need to uh, take a step back to middle school and remember the whole idea of lowest common denominator. All right, so the question is what is the lowest common denominator of? 2, that's the first denominator, 3, the second denominator, and 6. The LCD of all these three, of these three numbers is uh, 6. Okay? So the goal is to make all the denominators have the same den number, namely the uh, lowest common denominator, make them the lowest common denominator, and then we're going to extract it, and that will be our common root. Okay? So let's do it. So we have x to the 1 half. I need the, this to be uh, 6. So what do I multiply it by? I times it by 3, top and bottom. And then for the y component, y equals 2 over 3. I need this to be 6, so I multiply it by 2, top and bottom. And then for z, 5 over 6. I need this to be 6 on the bottom. It's already 6, so I'll just multiply by the multiplicative identity, which is 1. Or I can leave it alone, it makes no difference, all right? So now this becomes x to the 3 over 6, y to the 4 over 6, and z to the 5 6. Okay, this is exactly what we want. We want all the denominators to be identical, and that's the case here. 
So since we have our identical denominator, watch this. I'm going to use the properties of exponents to extract the denominator from all these all these uh, three powers here. So we're going to have x to the third, y to the fourth, z to the fifth. Factoring out the denominator equals one over six. Okay. Because notice, if I distribute one six to all these three numbers, what am I going to get? I'm going to end up with this. Okay. So I can ask, I might as well just factor it out. So remember the rule that x to the one over n equals the nth root of x, okay? This is the root, all right? And the numerator is the power. The power here is one, so it's inconsequential. So I'm going to express this using six as a root. So we're going to have, this is going to become the sixth root of x to the third, y to the fourth, and z to the fifth, okay? So what answer is that? Three, four, five, the answer is d. All right, now let's move on to question number five. This involves operation on matrices. This is a subtraction. So um, this question might look easy, but you have to be really careful when you're carrying out your arithmetic arithmetic on the uh, different uh, elements in the, in the matrix. Okay, the different the different cells in the matrix. Okay. Uh, in this case, you have a subtraction and you also have negative numbers. So you have to be careful when resolving the signs, all right? So this is, I'm going to set it up A minus B, like this. Um, this is matrix A on the left, matrix B is on the right. You must preserve the order whenever you carry any operations uh, with matrices because it's very sensitive to order. Matrices are very sensitive to order of operations, okay? All right, so to do that, we're going to be subtracting B from matrix A. So, uh, preserve the order of your elements. We're going to go 2 minus, don't forget that sign there, that's a trap, negative 2 for the first column, first row. Um, first row, second column, we're going to have negative 4 minus 4. Okay, that completes my first row. Second row, first column, we're going to have 6 minus negative 6. And then for uh, second row, second column, we're going to have 0 minus 0. Okay, now let's use our arithmetic skills to finish this up. These two are minuses. When you subtract a minus and minus, you multiply the signs so they become plus. So 2 plus 2 is 4. Minus 4 minus 4 is negative 8. 6 minus 6, these are two minuses. And multiply it to be a plus. 6 plus 6 is 12. 0 minus 0 is 0. So you have 4, negative 8, 12, and 0. Answer is option B. Okay. So thanks so much for uh, paying attention to this presentation. Um, please uh, subscribe to my channels for the second part of this uh, video series and for updates on other uh, cool math videos. And you can also feel free to uh, make requests for math videos on uh, my YouTube page. For more videos, you can go to math.serve.com. Thanks again and have a wonderful day.